So Alistair, I'm going to turn um, the mic or the, uh, plat the video platform over to you. And thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Felicia. And thank you everyone for, for taking the time out of your evening um, to check this out. Um, my hope tonight is uh, I'm sure we'll, you'll see a lot of things you've, you've already visited, but hopefully maybe you'll learn about some new parks and new trails and new things to do. Um, as Felicia mentioned, I've been with James City County Parks and Rec for a number of years now, and I've been a lifeguard, I've been a park attendant, I've, I've done just about every job you can do, and I really love the parks. I love our parks. Um, when I'm not in our parks, I, I love visiting our state parks and um, getting anywhere I can to hike or, or, or see different parts of the state and just be in the outdoors. Um, I think they're really important and, and essential to our community to have these outdoor public spaces. And hopefully they provided a little bit of relief over the past couple of years when, when there's, you know, people needed to get outside and get into the fresh air. Um, so just real quick, I wanted to talk a little bit about our um, department. I'm waiting for the slide here. Um, so our Parks and Rec Department is just celebrated its 40th anniversary last year. Um, and our mission here, it's a little bit of a, a mouthful. We work in partnership with citizens to ensure responsive programs, facilities, and open, open space, which promote personal growth, social development, and healthy lifestyles. And that's, that's a lot, but, but essentially we, we want to provide um, public places, parks, trails, programs, activities for all the citizens of James City County. Um, we're divided into three major divisions, um, and you've probably all interacted with us in some way, shape, or form. Um, one is in our community centers, uh, the James City County Recreation Center on Long Hill Road and Abram Frank Community Center by James River Elementary. Um, another division is our recreation services that offers all of our programs and camps and our Rec Connect before and after school program. And then the parks division, which I'm here to talk about today. So our division um, features 17 parks and trails. Um, we have seven parks with access to uh, many of the bodies of water around here, uh, 48 miles of trails, athletics, marinas, campgrounds, pools. We really have a, a wide and diverse range of different types of parks for people to enjoy in the county. Um, and I have a list here. So these, these are our 17 parks and some of these you'll recognize they're, they're large major parks, um, you know, Veterans Park, the home of Kidsburg, uh, Jamestown Beach Event Park. And then we have some smaller parks. We have some neighborhood parks like the Forest Glen Playground or Ironbound Park. Um, and some are, are smaller access points to water or trails as well. Um, but what's really neat about our community is it's not just James City County Parks. We have the city of Williamsburg has Kiwanis and Quarter Path and Waller Mill. Um, York County has uh, New Quarter Park. We have a great state park in York River State Park here. Um, and then we have national parks as well. So we're really fortunate in this small area to have a large number of open uh, public lands available. And um, this may be hard to read and you don't really need to read it, but just to look here at, the, at our county, everything that's a color on this map is a public um, space, either a park or a nature reserve. Um, and that's quite a bit for our area. This other map on the right here is from our master plan and it shows um, the driving access to a park from all over our county. So as you can see, a large portion of our residents are within a mile of a park and everybody's in within three miles of a park um, in James City County. So I just thought that was interesting to highlight how many parks we have and how close they all are. Um, so to start out with, I thought I'd talk about our trails. Um, I put these three together, our Virginia Capitol Trail and the Green Springs Interpretive Trail and the Powhatan Creek Trail. So I'm sure many folks are familiar with the Capitol Trail. It's a paved multi-use trail that runs 51 and a half miles. So it goes all the way from Jamestown to the city of Richmond. Um, it's really a remarkable, um, interesting trail. And we're lucky to have six and a half miles of that trail right here in James City County. So it provides a great um, connector to a number of different areas. Um, our sponsor for, for tonight, uh, Spoken Art Provisions, is actually located on the Capitol Trail, and they offer bike rentals, and um, they have food there, and, and kind of a great little pit stop while you're on that trail. 
Um, we have a number of different places you can park to access that trail. So you can always park at the Jamestown Settlement. Um, you can park at the James City County Marina, though we do have limited parking at that site. Um, it is adjacent to the trail. Um, Jamestown High School and Chickahominy Riverfront Park. So we're lucky to have a, a number of different areas that have free open public parking to access that trail. And then connected to that trail is the Green Springs Interpretive Trail. And this one is um, hiking only, but it's uh, ADA accessible and it's a gravel trail that's made with a small gravel find. So it's great for, it's, it's smooth enough to roll a wheelchair, to roll a stroller on. Um, and it's a fantastic place to go for wildlife viewing. It goes through the wetlands um, back there and it's located right behind Jamestown High School. So there's a whole parking lot just at the trailhead if you go all the way back at Jamestown High School. And that ties into the Capitol Trail and um, as many of the neighborhoods back there. And then lastly, Powhatan Creek Trail, which is also paved and multi-use and runs um, in the same area. It starts at Clarebird Baker Elementary. You can park behind the school there to access it. And it runs for two miles and connects to both the Green Springs and the Virginia Capitol Trail. So these three are really unique in that they tie a lot of different neighborhoods, communities, um, businesses, parks together. Um, so a, a really kind of neat network of trails. And they're also a great opportunity for um, education. The Green Springs Trail has 26 interpretive signs along it, and, and they vary from information about the natural history and um, other history of that area. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, trails in some of our parks that are more contained to the parks, but equally is, is interesting. So Freedom Park is home to a number of different types of trails. Um, we, we see a lot of people visit for the over 20 miles of mountain biking trails that were built by our partners, the Eastern Virginia Mountain Bike Association. But we also have a great one mile paved multi-use trail um, that connects to um, Hornsby Middle School on Jolly Pond Road. So it goes all the way from the school along Jolly Pond through the park and up to the parking lot of Freedom Park. Um, that one's a great trail. You can see it in this top left. It's a little covered in leaves in that picture, but I always like that fall picture of the trail there. Um, that one's great. It goes down over the Colby Swamp. It's got a lot of um, turns, uh, a, a few hills, but it's a nice, wide, smooth, great place to learn how to ride a bike. Um, and go for a family walk. And we have some other multi-use trails in that park as well. And then what I like to think of is a little bit of a hidden gem is our Living Forest Nature Trail. Um, it's just a small um, natural surface trail. It's only a quarter mile loop, but it was built um, by a number of groups that work with us. So um, Go Ape, which is located at Freedom Park, um, the Virginia Master Naturalists and many of our volunteer adopter park groups all work together to create this small trail that features uh, interpretive signs designed specifically for kids. So all the all the information on there, um, there's activities on the signs. They're all kind of geared towards kids um, and it's for kids and it's right behind the playground there. So it's a great addition to a playground trip at Freedom Park. Um, we also, if you're at Freedom Park, we offer uh, nature backpacks that have binoculars and different field guides. So you can, you can kind of plan a day around visiting Freedom Park, getting your nature backpack and taking a hike on a few of these trails. Um, also at the Warhill Sports Complex, um, which is located um, right behind Warhill High School, and it can be accessed either from Centerville Road or along Hill Road, um, features plenty of paved trails throughout the park but a very nice three and a half mile gravel trail that goes around the park. And you almost forget you're in a sports complex. It's, it's out in nature. There's a lot of great opportunities for bird watching and just for enjoying nature along that trail. Um, that trail does have a lot of hills and elevation. Um, so it's, it, it can be a little more challenging, but it's, it's still a great multi-use um, trail to go around the war hill there. And then we have other walking paths in some of our parks. Um, anyone familiar with Kidsburg knows we have a, a paved loop that goes around the park. Um, the rec center, we have a paved trail that runs 
um, along Long Hill Road. And then in Ironbound Park, we have a small paved trail as well. And if you'll notice here on this slide, I have a QR code. So that I have this pop up uh, throughout the presentation, but if you scan that, it'll take you to our um, recreation brochure that it, it, it's mainly known for having all of our programs and our camps, but the back few pages actually have some great information about our trails and some other park information. So page 36 of that, um, of that brochure has a list of every single trail, the distance, um, the address, um, parking, restrooms, the type of surface, um, kind of a nice handy guide. So throughout, I've included this QR code here if, if anybody's interested in checking that out. Um, if you don't have that technology, it can be found on our website, um, which I have listed at the end of this presentation, but jamescitycountyva.gov, and it should be right on the front page of the Parks and Recreation section. So, so after you hit the trails, um, we have a lot of opportunities for adventure in our parks. Um, we offer canoe and kayak rentals, um, stand-up paddleboard rentals, and bicycle rentals all at the James City County Marina. And I'm not sure um, who's familiar with the marina. Um, it has been closed um, for the past year plus due to renovations, but it's actually set to open um, in the next few days will be reopened. And we have a great new paddle craft launch for canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards that's now separated from where all the motor boats are. Um, so it's in its own little cove um, where you can paddle off into Powhatan Creek. Um, we have bicycle rentals. Like I mentioned before, it's located right on Virginia Capitol Trail. So if you, if you don't have a bike, you can go rent one from us and you, or even from Spoken Art and you can ride up and down the Capitol Trail. Um, you can try your hand at stand-up paddle boarding in the creek. So we have a lot of, of uh, fun adventures waiting at, at the James City County Marina beyond the um, boat launch and the boat slips uh, for the boaters there as well. Um, we also offer that service at Chickahominy Riverfront Park. Um, Chickahominy is a really cool park. It's mainly known for its campsite, um, but we have an outdoor pool in the summertime. We have canoe and kayak rentals. Um, we have a fishing pier. It's also along the Virginia Capitol Trail. Um, there's a great playground there and it's a really popular uh, site for birding and wildlife viewing. Um, so this is just a few of the parks where you can grab a canoe, grab a kayak and, and check out some of the waterways. Um, we have a few other places you can do that as well. Um, we have Powhatan Creek Park on Jamestown Road. Um, this one's a, a very basic canoe and kayak launch. Um, you'd have to bring your own canoe and kayak, but it puts you right into Powhatan Creek. Um, there's beautiful cypress trees. It's a really pretty area back there on the creek. Um, and our newest park, Brickyard Landing Park, um, we've had a boat ramp there for many years, but in 2020, we were able to purchase 119 acres around the boat ramp. And it was the site former site of the Newport News shipyard uh, recreation area back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And we've been able to restore two of the old picnic shelters out there. Um, so right now there's not a whole lot to see out there, but there's some limited parking, there's some picnic shelters, um, just fantastic views of Chicka the Chickahominy River. And in the next few years, we'll be adding some permanent restroom facilities, um, potentially a playground, some walking trails. There's a lot of space for trails out there. So that's the one to keep an eye on as it grows over the next few years. Um, we also have two parks on reservoirs. Little Creek Reservoir Park is off of Forge Road and it's um, on the Little Creek Reservoir. It's a very, very pretty area. Um, we also offer the canoe and kayak rentals. Um, it's a great place for fishing. We have a playground back there. That park right now, the, the reservoir itself has actually been drawn down. The water level is considerably lower than it normally is. So that has limited a little bit of our activity out there. Um, we don't rent quite as many canoes and kayaks as we used to, but it's still a great park um, just to take a walk and to enjoy the, the scenery out there. And then Diaskin Reservoir Park, which is um, really just a boat launch on the Diaskin Reservoir and it's operated jointly with uh, Newport News Water Works and uh, the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. Um, so those are all the, 
fantastic places to get out onto the water and, and go on an adventure in our, in our parks. Um, I'm thinking most in this group will be familiar with, with many of these, but I really like to talk about our, our playgrounds. Kidsburg is well known. I think everyone's familiar with Kidsburg. That's our big um, kind of flagship playground that everyone's familiar with, but that park has a few new features as well. We just added a fenced in off leash dog area that's been very popular. Um, it's an amenity we hope to add in more parks down the road. Um, we also in the past couple of years have added pickleball courts. Um, if anyone's driven by or visited Kidsburg, you've seen the very popular um, sport and activity. And we have basketball and sand volleyball um, in our picnic shelters there. But we also, and I'm not sure that everyone knows this, but we also have an abundance of playgrounds throughout the county. So we specifically have 11 playgrounds in, at nine park sites. And then there's also 27 playgrounds at nine school sites in the county. Um, so those are all open to the public. Um, no matter where you live in the county, there should be a playground relatively close. In addition to that, we have the city of Williamsburg. They have a, a great playground at Kiwanis um, and playgrounds in some of their other parks as well. So we have quite a few playgrounds spread throughout the parks. Um, and then we have parkland around some of our community centers. So the James City County Rec Center features a skate park um, that's free and open to the public for skateboarding, uh, rollerblading. Um, we have park space around the Abram Frank Community Center, and we have a multitude of athletic fields and courts, uh, the Warhill Sports Complex. Um, we have, like I mentioned, the pick pickleball and basketball courts um, around several of our parks as well. And then exploring history and nature. Um, I feel like you can do this at all of our parks, but I really just want an excuse to highlight Freedom Park. It's, it's one of my favorites and it's got a little bit of everything going on. So it was the site of one of the first free black settlements in the United States in the early 1800s. And there's recreated cabins um, that were similar to the types of homes that were lived in at that time. You can walk inside um, we have an interpretive center where you can learn a little bit about the history and the archaeological studies that were performed out there. Um, the park is also home to Go Ape, which is a public-private partnership we have with uh, the Go Apes rope course. They have a, a, a high adventure rope course. They have, they've added axe throwing. Um, they've added a number of different activities um, that, can be, that, that can be done there. And then we also have the Williamsburg Botanical Garden, which is a organization we partner with and they manage and maintain um, the garden as you enter the park and they put on some programs every month and the very popular butterfly festival, um, which features live butterflies, people get to interact with them. So they've, they've been a fantastic partner. Freedom Park has a little bit for everyone and um, plenty of programs that I'll get to in a little bit as well. And then we also have a lot of interpretive areas. I mentioned the Green Springs Trail, um, the Powhatan Creek Trail also features interpretive signs and opportunities for education, um, as do Chickahominy Riverfront Park and Jamestown Beach Event Park. Um, you can also go on a picnic. All of our parks have open spaces with picnic tables and grills. And then we also have uh, picnic shelters in a number of our parks. You'll see I added that QR code again, all of this information is in, in our brochure in more detail, but we have uh, shelters all throughout our parks that can be rented um, or can be used for on a first come first serve basis if they aren't rented. So a great way to have a birthday party or um, just spend a day at, you know, getting out of the sun, eating lunch. Um, and we also have two meeting spaces that can be reserved as well at Freedom Park which is a really neat one that features an indoor and outdoor fireplace and a patio and Veterans Park, which is a, a smaller place, accommodates up to 20, but it's great for birthday parties at Kidsburg. And then finally, uh, after all that, you can cool off. Um, Jamestown Beach Event Park is our large beachfront area on the James River. Um, it's free and open to the public uh, year round. Um, there's places to swim, hang out on the beach, um, picnic, fish, and it's also um, the home to most of our events. So there's special events throughout the year that 
either other people come and book special events or that parks and recreation puts on there. We've had concerts, we've had all, all sorts of events out there. And that is a really kind of great and unique way to spend a summer day is to go out to the beach. Um, there's a full concession stand out there. And if you're a resident of James City County or Williamsburg, it's all completely free. Um, we do charge a parking fee and it's the only park we charge a parking fee uh, for non-residents at this location. And then we have two outdoor pools. Um, Chickahominy Riverfront Park uh, features an outdoor pool and uh, our, our splash pad that was just added three or four years ago. And Upper County Park has an outdoor pool as well. And both of the pools have picnic shelters adjacent for, for birthday parties or for um, events there. So. Um, and then we offer programs in, in all of our parks. And I try to just do a short list of some of the programs that we put on ourselves in our parks. Um, again, the full list is in our brochure, but I wanted to highlight Project 547. We've been doing that for a few years now, and it's um, also called the longest day of play. But on the first day of summer, so the longest day of the year, every year, um, we have events all day long. And there's uh, free access to all of our pools. Um, there's, there's all sorts of giveaways and programs, and we're still in the process of, of coming up with the full slate of programs for that. Um, but that will be on June 21st on the first day of summer. And it's going to be, um, really something going on in just about every park and community center throughout the County. So that's really a neat day to get out and enjoy something. There should be something for everyone, whether it's sunrise yoga or, um, you know, a sunset kayak. Um, there should be something in there for everyone. And then we, we also have a number of other um, different programs throughout the summer and throughout the year um, at, at a variety of our parks. Let's see. And then just uh, quickly, just to give some updates on, on the future, I mentioned the James City County Marinas set to reopen. Um, really within a matter of days here that should reopen and we'll, we'll be back to offering our, our canoe and kayak rentals and bike rentals there. Um, Brickyard Landing is the new park I mentioned that we're working on. Um, we also are working to develop a new park in the Grove area. Um, we have some information on our website now soliciting feedback, um, but we have located a, a property on, on Route 60 between Bush Gardens and James River Elementary that will be developed into a community park for the Grove area in the next two years here. Um, so that's something we're very excited about. There's information online if you'd like to provide feedback and um, there will be public input throughout that project. And um, that's the result of a uh, community recreation analysis that we did in 2018 to, to look and see what kind of rec recreation amenities were lacking in that area and what we could what we could provide um, in that park. Um, some, other, some other new kind of exciting things, uh, Chickahominy Riverfront Park just underwent a massive shoreline stabilization, um, which long story short, we, uh, we, we regraded the shoreline where it was eroding and now it's very wide open and there's little sandy beach areas. It's not like Jamestown Beach where, you know, where, you can go and spend the day at the beach, but you can actually access the water now and you can take a walk along the Chickahominy River. In the future, we, we, were, we were planning on building a trail along the Chickahominy River all the way from the Capitol Trail all the way up this point here um, to where Gordon Creek meets the Chickahominy River. Um, we're going to be replacing our fishing pier. We're very excited about that. Um, it's going to be open 24 seven. Um, we'll, we'll have lighting, um, improved parking and railings and, and a lot of things that are gonna make it a lot more uh, user friendly. And that should be coming this summer, probably closer to the end of the summer. And then at the Warhill Sports Complex, um, also this summer, we're gonna be completely renovating the basketball courts. So we're gonna have some three brand new basketball courts out at the Warhill Sports Complex by the end of this summer. And in the next two years, um, we have on our capital, and capital improvement program, um, expansion of the softball and baseball fields at the Warhill Sports Complex. So we're looking forward to some of those new projects there as well. Um, so, that was a, you know, hopefully not too lightning fast view of everything we have to offer. I did want to point out we are on Facebook and that is the best place to see upcoming events and news and notices. Um, we try to highlight maybe some 
some things you haven't seen before on Facebook as well. So those are accessible here. I'm using those links um, and as well as our general web page, if you want to check that out, that's also the address.